Hello. Today we're going to look at a new approach in 2014 for the creation of your selection sets. Selection sets are very important with a couple of features within Navisworks. One of these is the clash detective, where you pick one set of objects and look for clashes against another set of objects. And the second one is for the timeliner. The timeliner is the one I'm going to be showing today because this is where the new feature comes into play. My name is Drew Jarvis and I'm an application specialist with Cancel in BC, Canada. Here we have a file inside of Navisworks Manage. You can see down the bottom of my screen I have my timeliner and what I'm going to do is add a, an MPX file. I'm going to select that file and just complete a mapping here. Okay. Now I have my bim.mpx. I right click on it and I rebuild the task hierarchy. That enables my tasks to show up inside of the tasks tab inside of the timeliner. Now, if I take a look at my sets, you can see here it's currently empty. One of the standard workflows when using the timeliner is to have a bunch of sets and their names match up with the tasks inside of the timeliner. The reason for this is so that you can then use the tool here to use a rule that maps the timeliner tasks to the selection set names. Now this also works with search sets. The new feature in 2014 allows for the automatic creation of selection sets, unfortunately not search sets. So at this stage, what we're going to be able to do is automate the naming of those sets. We will still have to then apply the objects. Now, let's take a look at that in action. On my tasks here, I can simply right click on my source and export to sets. What that does is it populates my sets with a group of selection sets. Now I'm going to order these, so simply right click on the top here and sort. That will enable them to be sorted alphabetically. Now basically I've just got to apply the objects to those selection sets. So the nice thing here is I don't have to write out all of these names. So how do we make selection sets? So for those that haven't done it, what we do is we use our find tool. So for example, using the find items I'm going to select the item whereby its type contains foundation. I'll hit find all and you see it highlights all of the objects in the model there that are foundations. There's 1225 of these as I can see from the properties palette. Now all I need to do is go and find the relevant selection set, right click on it and update. Now you can see as I click somewhere else, then click back to foundations, it highlights those objects. So effectively what I want to do is change my selection sets here from being empty to having objects inside, which is signified by the blue square. So let's take a look at floor slabs. How did I figure out what I needed down here? Well, if I pick one of these objects, and take a look at its properties you can see that the item tab here type property contains the word foundations so that's how I came up with item type contains foundation so if I take a look at one of the floor slabs maybe what I'll do actually is uh, hide my foundations first so just right click here and hide now I can pick my floor slab look at its properties and I'll see here that its type is floor or contains floor and its layer is on level one so that indicates to me that I can find my first floor, second floor, third floor separately by searching for a type that contains floors and layer that equals level one. So type contains floor and layer equals level one. Find all 
and it finds all of the objects that apply to that. We right click here, we update. Now it's just a question of changing the properties here until I get the appropriate items. So what I'm looking to do is change as many of these objects here to having blue squares inside and as I do find them what I'll do is hide them. I'll just simply select, right click and hide and this makes it easy for me to see what's left. So that concludes this short example of how to create selection sets from a task hierarchy that you've imported into the Timeliner, a new feature in 2014. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at drew.jarvis at cancel.ca and I'm always happy to talk to you about Autodesk Revit, AutoCAD and Navisworks products. Thank you.